You are a very lucky boy that you're still on this field, so I'll yes, go sir. back and go to the line, please. Try stand. In this video, I want to break the mould a bit and move away from what I'm usually showing on my Instagram. If you do follow me, you would have seen hundreds of single phase rugby moves. Now these all look very impressive when they work correctly. However, for the few times they do work, there are dozens of times they don't. This comes down to one main thing. Single phase moves rely on mistakes. In theory, the defence should always be able to stop a first phase move. There is no numerical advantage or overlap, so the defence should always be able to stop a first phase move if they just follow simple defensive principles. That's why all these moves employ decoy runs to trick the defence, force a mistake and then exploit the gap. But what if you don't want to rely on defensive mistakes? What else can you rely on? Speed. This isn't just referring to being Lewis Rees Zabbitt and outpacing everyone out wide, but instead game speed and ball speed. If your team can get players and the ball to space quicker than the other team, it's very easy to score. So here enters the idea of two phase play, where speed is the key. These are two phase plays that are pre-planned, purposeful moves and engineered to beat the opposition with speed, working best from set pieces. Let's look at a good example here from England playing against the USA. We start with a shortened line out and the ball is quickly spread to the 12 and 13 channel. With two England forwards taking in the ball, the ball is recycled quickly. Another pod of two England forwards run a dummy line fixing the defenders, which now leaves a very easy 5 on 3 out wide. Now there's a lot going on here and it's played at a very high speed, so let's break it down slowly to show you what you might have missed. The USA has the forwards who are not in the lineout defending in close to the lineout, while England have them out wide. This means that when the England forwards crash the ball in this first phase, they dominate the collision and generate quick ball, but also take out the 12 and 13 who are used to defending out wide. The ruck is quick, but as it happens, England have flooded players to the far side. The England forwards who have got round the ruck run a dummy line taking out the few USA forwards defending that side of the breakdown. This all leads to almost the entire England back line against the USA's 10, 14 and 15. This two-phase play all relies on speed. If England are too slow, USA will be able to get more players around the initial breakdown and squash the overlap. So therefore, setting up the first breakdown and getting the ball recycled quickly is key to making this work. Another good example can be found with this World Cup game from Wales versus Georgia. This time, the 12 is used to crash right into the middle of the defensive line. Two forwards create quick ball and two more forwards are again used to draw in the defenders. This leaves only three defenders on the open side against the seven attackers for Wales. It can be seen from above just how much space this generates and the significant numerical advantage Wales have. Many teams have used this idea, all following very similar structures. Here's two examples from the Cheetahs where they run the same two phase move only a week apart both from a set piece, running a crash ball into the middle of the defensive back line and generating quick ball. A couple of forwards drawing in the few defenders that did manage to get round the breakdown and finally getting the ball out wide to exploit those gaps. Now obviously, a two phase move doesn't magically work every time. Here, Ireland attempt a two phase move like the ones we've been analysing. However, in the second phase, Johnny Sexton makes an uncharacteristic mistake showing that even though the move worked out well, you still need to be able to do the basics well to make it come off. Only seven minutes later in the same game, Ireland try the same two-phase move again from the other side of the field. Again, it fails, but this time because Wales are able to take away Ireland's key advantage, speed. They hold up the first phase, so the ball is slow, meaning more defenders can get around the ruck. And even though Ireland do still actually have an overlap, the ball speed is too slow and the Welsh defence come up too quickly and squash the attack. This second failed attempt by Ireland actually highlights a benefit of the two phase attacking move. Support. Unlike single phase moves where the ball is typically being spread out wide to the winger in space, a huge part of this two phase move idea is to try and get numbers to support and create an overlap. Therefore, if the move does fail, it's very easy to maintain possession as there will be a lot of supporting attackers nearby. So maybe for the upcoming season, instead of focusing on single phase flashy backs moves, look at creating a couple two phase moves where you look to manipulate the defence and beat the opposition with speed. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to make your own rugby animations like the ones you've seen in this video, 
please head over to animator.rugbyslate.com and if you like this video, go check out the other videos on my channel and please consider subscribing to see more videos in the future.